Good morning and welcome to our online service here in Isle McGee. You are really, really welcome, no matter where you're joining us from. Often on a Sunday morning, I would say to everyone that my prayer is that you have felt welcomed to church today and that you might know God's blessing as you worship with us. The first part of that is harder for us to do these days. Usually we might be sitting around those that we see in this picture. And it would be just a matter of turning around or moving across to greet each other. Not so today. And so can I encourage you to lift the phone, to send a, a text or a WhatsApp and, and let your church family know that you miss them today. We might be missing the handshake at the door or the hug in the aisle, but we have some hellos from our church family today. Hello from John. And Sheila Hill from Mill Bay. I hope everyone is keeping safe and we will see you soon. Hello everybody from Ines and Elsie. Hope you're all well. Miss you, see you when this is all over. Bye. Hello everybody. This is Janet talking to you from Scotland. I hope you're all keeping well and safe uh, as we are here and I hope to see you very soon. Bye. Hello everyone, missing you all. Hope to see you soon for tea and chat. Stay safe, bye. Today's service is a little different. It's the beginning of Christian Aid Week and today is our Christian Aid service. And our service will be led by representatives of Christian Aid as well as members of our own church family. And the usual events of Christian Aid Week have unfortunately had to be changed but we continue to look to see what God has to say to us and how we might reach out in love towards those who are not as fortunate as ourselves. As we come to worship God together today, as we begin to contemplate who God is, what he has done for us through Christ, it's important for us to still our hearts and our minds, to be still. Can I encourage you? in these next few moments to let God's word speak into your life. I'm going to read three sets of verses. Verses firstly that speak of God's character. Secondly verses that speak of an example of sitting at Jesus' feet. And then thirdly verses that I hope might be your prayer today. Psalm 116. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Look 10. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Psalm 62 Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is your refuge. Amen. Let's sing together, be still, for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Be still for the presence of the
his cross How awesome is the sight And our radiant King of light Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining The Apostle Paul writes, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you for this amazing love that the Apostle Paul writes about. Love from which nothing in this whole world will ever be able to separate us from. And so God of heaven and earth, in these times of isolation, apart from loved ones, distant from friends, away from neighbours, thank you that there's nothing in all creation, not even coronavirus, that is able to separate us from your love. May your love that never fails continue to be shared through the kindness of strangers looking out for each other, for neighbours near and far, all recognising our shared vulnerability. Each of us grateful for every breath and willing everyone to know the gift of a full and healthy life. Keep us all in your care today. Father, we thank you for the life that we have in Jesus Christ. Father, help us to be thankful for that life that you've given us. Father, today, challenge us, encourage us how we might use the life that you've given us to love you and to love others. Father, today, we thank you for our church family. We thank you for the blessing that it is. And even though in these days when we are apart, we thank you, Father, that we can meet together. Father, speak to us today. Encourage us today. Draw us closer to you today. Father, we thank you that through your Spirit and through Jesus Christ, we can pray to you. Father, we thank you for the words of the Lord's Prayer that you gave your disciples that we can use now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today, for our Christian aid service, through the wonders of modern technology, we're going to hear from two members, representatives 
of Christian Aid today. For our kids address, we're going to hear from Dave Thomas, who is the church and community manager for Christian Aid. He's going to come and speak to the children, but also to us all today. Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me. Oh, hi there. I feel like I'm washing my hands all the time at the moment. It used to be the case that I would remind my daughters to wash their hands, but now I feel like they're the ones reminding me. But it is good to wash our hands, isn't it? It helps to protect us from getting ill and it helps to protect other people. And it's really easy for me because I've got a tap here in my sink. I've got um, plenty of soap to use as well. But all this hand washing reminds me of some of the people that I've met around the world with Christian aid. For some of them, it's much harder to get water to wash their hands. I was in Kenya, a country in Eastern Africa, and in parts of Kenya, it can be really, really dry for many months of the year. I went to a primary school called Kavangoni Primary School, where Christian aid had been helping people. In that primary school, most of the children had no taps at home, no source of water for washing their hands, and even at school, there were no taps. So imagine how difficult it was for them to keep their hands clean and to prevent germs from spreading. The primary school principal told us that many of the children took days off because they were sick. So Christian Aid helped, and what they did was they gave the school water tanks with taps and soap so that they could wash their hands. They also taught them songs so that the children would know how important it was to keep their hands clean. And the primary school principal told us that because of that help, the children weren't taking as many days off school as they used to. So that was really good news. And I know that some children here have also been learning to wash their hands while singing songs. Some people have been singing happy birthday twice to remind them to wash their hands really, really thoroughly. And so I want to suggest something else that you can do whilst you're washing your hands to remind you to wash them really, really thoroughly. Whilst you wash your hands, you can say a prayer and you can use your fingers to remind you of who to pray for. So firstly, as you wash your thumb, pray for those closest to you, like your family and friends. Secondly, as you wash your pointing finger, pray for those who look after us. Thirdly, as you wash your tallest finger, pray for those in charge who are making difficult decisions. And fourthly, as you wash your ring finger, which is the weakest finger, pray for those who are particularly in need. And then fifthly, as you wash your little finger, pray for yourself. And then last, as you wash the palm of your hand, thank God that he holds the whole world in his hands. So let's try it now. Lord, please protect my family and friends. Lord, bless the doctors and nurses and pharmacists and others working hard to keep us safe. Lord, give wisdom to those in charge. Help them to make the right decisions. Lord, be with those who already find it hard to get clean water in places like Kenya. Lord, help me to stay safe and to love others as you love me. Lord, thank you that the whole world is in your hands. Please help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. And then you can pray whilst washing the other hand. So next time you wash your hands, please remember people around the world who find it much harder to get clean, safe water. And pray for Christian aid as we try to help everyone stay safe. I believe this is our eighth online service. And so can I thank you for your patience over these weeks of change, your willingness to tune in to this video. It's different for all of us, but my prayer is that you might have been encouraged by our worship together and that God has been at work in your life, drawing you closer to him as you have trusted in him. As we look to the coming weeks and months, we don't know when we will be able to meet together in a church building again. We need to continue to trust in God's timing, continue to look to how we can love each other as a church family and also look to our community and how we can love our community, especially those in need. 
A big thank you to those who responded to the opportunity to support Whitehead Storehouse. We were able to pass across a, a whole carload of groceries and also a very encouraging financial gift. And so thanks goes to Margaret Cathcart for coordinating that. And we do hope to do it again in the coming months. In these days, can I encourage you to pray for our church family, but especially the family of Ellie Geddes of Willowvale Drive, who passed away in this past week. So please do remember Maureen and Trevor, John, Paul and Joan, and their families over the coming days. Thank you. Before we take time to pray for others today, I'd love you to join me in reading Psalm 31. So please do pick up your Bibles, turn to Psalm 31. It's a psalm that speaks of the psalmist's response when life was more challenging. These are words that can encourage us and guide us as we live in these uncertain days. So let's hear God's word to us in Psalm 31. And then Fiona Craig is going to lead us in prayers for others. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am distressed. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction, my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbours and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten, as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear many whispering terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and be silent in the realm of the dead. Let their lying lips be silent for with pride and contempt they speak arrogantly against the righteous. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all and those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence you hide them from all human intrigues. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. In my alarm I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Amen. Hello. 
I never thought the day would come when I would say I missed going to church. But I do. I miss seeing all of you and being able to spend time together in God's presence. But I look forward with hope to the time when we'll meet again. Let's bow before God with our prayers for others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your many blessings to us in these strange times. The small acts of kindness, the gentle loving word, the comfort of your presence with us. May we use this time of fewer distractions to draw closer to you by reading your word and praying as individuals and as families. And let this be a time in which we take a good hard look at all the things we have thought so desirable or so important in our daily lives to realise that the only really important thing in this life is you our Lord and our God. Friday saw us mark VE Day, 75 years since the end of the war in Europe. We thank you for all those whose selfless and courageous service and sacrifice brought peace to Europe. And we remember the awful cost of war and we pray never again. And we ask for peace for those whose lives have been torn apart and forever changed by war and conflict. We pray for those regions of the world where conflict still exists and ask that your peace will reign over all the earth. On this Christian Aid Sunday, we pray for and with communities across the world who are most vulnerable to coronavirus. We pray for people living in refugee camps and city slums, who have limited sanitation facilities, who are unable to wash their hands regularly and who have little opportunity to isolate from others. We pray for Christian Aid partners working to provide soap and buckets communicating clear, accurate information and raising the voices of the most vulnerable and ensuring they are kept as safe as possible. And Lord, we pray for everyone at home, for those in hospital or at home recovering from sickness of any kind. For those who are bereaved, missing loved family members or friends. For those furloughed and worried about money or the future of their job. For those working from home, that they are able to develop a healthy work life. Balance. For those who are homeschooling and who feel inadequate or overwhelmed by the task. For those who are feeling the pressure of caring for children in the lockdown. For all those who are feeling so alone, so isolated. And in the stillness, we lift those whom we love before you. Lord, envelop us in the warmth of your love. In Jesus' name, Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain. I count but love.
before the Reverend Liz Hughes, the chair of Christian Aid Ireland, is going to come and share with us. Charles Smith is going to come and read to us from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 8. So please do pick up your, your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians 13, and Charles is going to come and read to us verses 1 to 8. Thank you, Charles. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 8. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body the hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Thanks be to God for this his word. I'm Liz Hughes and I'm Chair of Christian Aid Ireland and I'm so glad to be able to use this opportunity to say thank you to all of you who so generously support Christian Aid in good times and tough times. Those of you who pray, who campaign, who fundraise, who volunteer, who collect and who give. In January I had the privilege of visiting Sierra Leone and seeing at first hand the work of Christian Aid and our partners. On the Saturday of our visit, there was a civic function in the district of Kono and all sorts of dignitaries were invited, all paying tribute to the impact our partners were making in sustainable development in the local area. As we were being formally greeted as guests, the paramount chief, who is a Muslim, took time to express thanks specifically to the churches in Ireland for their support of the work of Christian aid, which was benefiting the whole community. The next morning, we were worshipping in the Assemblies of God congregation in Kono, and the pastor took time to express thanks to the churches in Ireland for all their support of Christian aid. And he went on to list the very positive changes that had taken place as a result of our partners' work throughout the district. Their church building had been destroyed by fire during the Civil War and their congregation was again devastated during the Ebola crisis. In fact, they had three offerings taken up that morning in the midst of much enthusiastic praising the Lord and with lots of singing and dancing. One of the offerings was a regular one for the general work of the church. One was given by those in business who could afford to tithe. And one was called the Compassion Offering, which is, was especially for those who had been bereaved during the Ebola crisis. Christian Aid's country manager, Jeanne Camara, told us how the deepest anguish in that crisis was not only the horror of the disease itself, but the inability to give your loved one the familiar burial rites of custom and culture. Not being able to touch the body of a child or a parent was the hardest of all. We visited the Interreligious Council who shared how as faith leaders they gathered their people in churches and mosques all over the country and told them how important the laws of hygiene and infection control were. But more than that, in the worst of circumstances, they were there to show how even when the usual customs could not be followed, 
burials could be conducted in a safe and dignified way. Christian Aid Sierra Leone had an important role in bringing the faith leaders together and mobilising them into action. It was a story of love and compassion and turning faith into action in caring for neighbour at every turn. Little did we know then, as we listened to the stories of those toughest of times, that our own part of the world would be turned upside down by an equally devastating infectious disease. At any time of crisis, Christians find comfort in the words of scripture. The Psalms in particular so often reflect the personal struggles and fears, questions and doubts, tough times and joyful celebrations which echo in our minds. It might be the words of reassurance from Psalm 23. The shepherd who cares for his flock even in the dangers of the deepest valley. Or Psalm 46, the God who is a refuge and a strength and a very present help in time of trouble. Or the heartfelt prayer of Psalm 57, where the psalm writer says to God, I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. One of the lectionary readings for Christian Aid Week just happens to be Psalm 31, which is written by someone who is clearly feeling very poorly because of some form of illness or disease. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Even in the face of serious illness, the psalm writer places his trust in God. Into your hands I commit my spirit. The words which Jesus himself repeated on the cross. Later in the psalm, the phrase reappears. In you I take refuge. My times are in your hands. One of the deepest poignancies of this coronavirus has not been a being able to be present to hold the hands of someone dear to us who is ill. There is something profoundly significant about knowing that we can trust ourselves and those whom we love into God's hands in the darkest of times. In Sierra Leone, we visited the village of Bayama, part of the Health Legacy Programme highlighted in last year's Christian Aid Week. I was deeply touched as we walked around that village. We listened to their pride in making plate racks. Outside every mud brick hut, there was a kind of rack made from wooden pieces, constructed so as they could lift the dishes off the ground to keep them clean and hygienic. The simplest of projects, but making such a difference. Thanks to the health programme, the villagers were discovering what their rights were how they could call their health authorities to account, how they could keep careful track of the drugs assigned to their very basic health clinic. We met Jebby and Nurse Judith, who had travelled from a nearby village. Those of you involved in Christian Aid Week last year will remember Jebby's story. Jebby herself is so small and tiny. She told us how she had lost two babies before. But now, with improved facilities, her baby had been born healthy. We saw the health clinic in Bayama, the most basic of accommodation. One woman was looking very ill on a drip in the corner of the room. Children and adults crowded into the waiting room. I can't begin to imagine the devastation that another highly contagious disease might impact that village. We have found our health services here to be seriously stretched at times and short of equipment during this pandemic. I dread to think how the disease would spread to Bayama and its surrounding villages. At the same time, we also saw the hand washing techniques in almost every village, where during the Ebola crisis, people were shown basic rules of hygiene and we came across many ingenious devices for delivering a relatively small amount of water into our hands for washing. 
Christian Aid Sierra Leone will have many challenges as they seek to combat this new disease. But they will also have lessons to teach other developing countries. And Christian Aid will build on these as we seek to protect vulnerable communities, those on the margins, those who will be most at risk. The psalm writer, even in the worst of moments, speaks of God's unfailing love. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. God's unfailing love is a theme taken up throughout the Bible, culminating in the familiar passage from 1 Corinthians 13 on the nature of love, where we are reminded that love never fails. There is nothing love cannot face. There is no limit to its faith, its hope, its endurance. Love will never come to an end. At present, we see only puzzling reflections in a mirror, but one day we shall see face to face. Love never fails. I thank God today that whatever happens, I can place my life in his hands with confidence. I can experience something of the unfailing love which took Jesus to the cross. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I thank God for all the people who've been showing love to neighbour during this crisis, who've been caring on the front line, who've been volunteering, who've been praying. But my heart goes out to those parts of the world like Sierra Leone, ravaged by civil war, then by Ebola, and now facing the dangers of COVID-19 with limited resources, fragile health services and low immunity. Those places where people can't stay home because they only have food supplies to survive from day to day. Those places where life is precarious enough without this new pandemic threat. They so much need our prayers. Love never fails. This year's Christian Aid Week theme. We are challenging people to think of one expense that they have actually managed to save during lockdown. Maybe that's a tank of petrol or a night in the town or the regular visit to the hairdresser or the golf club. And to set aside the equivalent to donate. I'm really missing being able to go out for breakfast to a coffee shop or somewhere like that with family or friends pretty well every other week. It's just about my favourite thing to do. So I'm giving the equivalent of that to the Christian Aid Week appeal. It's only a gesture, but it's one way of making up for the fact that we can't do the usual door-to-door -door collections or fundraising events in these circumstances. Love never fails. God's love never fails. No matter what, our times are in God's hands. We are in God's hands. No better place to take refuge. Coronavirus impacts all of us, but God's love unites us all. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Even in the darkest moments, love gives hope. Love compels us to stand together in solidarity with our neighbours near and far. Love compels us to fight against coronavirus alongside our sisters and brothers living in poverty. Love compels us to stand together in prayer with our neighbours near and far. Love compels us to give and act as one. Amen. Look at your hand. Have a good look at them. However your hands look to you, they are most certainly clean in these days of regular hand washing to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Our hands really are the most remarkable and useful tools involved in so much of what we do and how we do things, even in these days of social distancing. The psalmist writes of committing his spirit into God's hands and at times of being in God's hands he also describes his desire to be to, to be delivered from the hands of oppressors and from the hidden invisible net that threatens to entangle him our hands have become even more significant 
in these days of physical distancing. We might long to hold the hand of a person we can no longer touch. We pray for the hands of medics to bring healing and comfort. We are grateful for the hands that stack shells and deliver groceries and post. And we are extra wary of everything that our hands touch outside our homes that we might bring into our homes. This Christian Aid Week, we also think of how our hands can be far from idle. Though not handing out envelopes or the many things that we would usually do during Christian Aid Week, our hands can still reach out virtually to our neighbours around the world. Neighbours in refugee camps and cramped living conditions. Neighbours without adequate hand washing facilities. Neighbours who face the devastating impact of the coronavirus with even less of the medical resources that we can access here. We reach out by clasping our hands together in prayer for our neighbours. Holding our hands open before God as we declare our needs and the concerns for their well-being and our own. We also reach out by participating in this digital Christian Aid Week through making our online donations, by sharing the stories from Christian Aid partners, by working on the ground to be the hands and feet of love in action. If you would like to and are able to make a donation online to help vulnerable communities, well, I'd really encourage you to do that. And you can do that through the Just Giving pages of both congregations. You can see the information on the screen now. The links will be up on, on Facebook and the website of Ballyclare and also in the description of this video. Meaning giving is only a click away. And I would really encourage you to avail of this opportunity online. It's the easiest way to give and you are given the opportunity to gift aid your donation as well as the money going straight to Christian Aid. So why not, after you finish watching this video online, head across to Just Giving. Maybe this week as you head to the website, as you read about the work of Christian Aid, that you maybe like to regularly support Christian Aid and the, the opportunity and information to do that can be found on their website. As we close our time together, as we look towards the week ahead, we want to remind ourselves of God's work of rescue in our lives through Jesus. It's a reminder that no matter what this week or month or year might bring, there is no one like our God, strong to save and faithful in love. The Lord is my salvation. The grace of God has reached for me and pulled me from the raging sea solid ground the Lord is my salvation I will not fear when darkness falls His strength will help me scale these walls I'll see the dawn of the rising
Thank you for joining with us for our online service today. Can I pray for you as we close our time together? May the presence of our Creator God refresh you. May the comfort of His Son renew you. May the inspiration of the Spirit restore you. To be love in action, even from a distance, in our neighbourhoods near and far, this day and forevermore. Amen.